वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अनुरेखा चारी वाघ असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ पुणे आई एम कोऑर्डिनेटिंग द पेपर ऑन सोशोलॉजी ऑफ इंडिया टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल मैरिज इन इंडिया दिस मॉड्यूल हैज बिन रिटर्न बाय सुमति उंकुले रिसर्च स्कॉलर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशोलॉजी सावित्री बाई फुले पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी दिस मॉड्यूल विल डिस्कस द सोशल इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ मैरिज the various theoretical perspectives that has been used to analyze marriage in india further it will also analyze the impact of neoliberal policies on marriage practices in india and finally it will also understand the changing nature of marriage within contemporary india and will end with challenges to the institution of marriage in india introduction this module seeks to understand and analyze the contemporary social institution of marriage from a sociological perspective never prior to this has the institution of marriage been so diverse with so many emerging trends and facing myriad challenges this module will try to understand the changing nature and emerging trends of marriage as a social institution the module situates this debate in the larger context of globalization and neoliberalism lastly it will study the challenges facing this institution let us begin by understanding the concept of social institution in common parlance the word institution is used to signify a building a group of people or organization in sociology the concept of institution is different from this common usage it means an institution is a system of organizing social relationships which embodies certain common values and procedures and meets certain basic needs of the society they are structured processes through which people carry on their activities according to horton and hunt an institution is a system of norms to achieve some goal or activity that people feel is important or more formally an organized cluster of folkways and mores centered on a major human activity sumner defines institution as something which consists of a concept idea notion doctrine or interest and a structure institutions have emerged gradually over the years as products of people living together Earlier when people started living in groups they developed certain patterns in their day to day life to meet their daily needs slowly these patterns were accepted by large number of people and received social sanctions eventually rules were established and these rules were codified into laws these practices continue to develop and change at the same time institutions impose constraints on individuals In this module we are going to study the social institution of marriage marriage as a social institution marriage as an institution has a very long history the work of sociologists like edward westermark the history of human marriage and historians like v k rajwade the history of marriage in india are some attempts to record the history of marriage as a social institution marriage initiates a man and a woman into a family life largely considered as a stable relation it permits a man and a woman to establish sexual relations and have children like all other institution the institution of marriage true has slowly emerged into its present form in every society form nature and aim of marriage are different in almost all societies one or the other form of marriage exists in india marriage remains an important rite of passage in an individual's life definition edward westermark in his well known book the history of human marriage defines marriage as a more or less durable connection between a male and a female lasting beyond the mere act of propagation till after the birth of offspring malinowski on the other hand defines marriage as a contract for the production and maintenance of children robert o blood states marriage is perceived by sociologists as a system of roles of a man and a woman whose union has been given social sanction as husband and wife the equilibrium of system requires adjustment between the two partners so that the role and enactment of one partner corresponds to the role expectations of the other theoretical framework most of the definitions above define marriage as an institution that contributes to the smooth functioning of a society they study marriage and the important role it plays in the society at large that is they study marriage from a functionalist framework the functionalist approach stresses the importance of functions of marriage as an institution for the society as a whole they study how marriage as an institution is related to other parts of society and the way in which it contributes to the well-being of the society structural functionalists study marriage from a macro perspective this lets them focus on the most important functions that affect nearly every marriage and not on the less common functions that affect few marriages according to this perspective marriage will serve the needs of society of producing children regulating the relation between sexes both the partners benefit from the gender division of labor 
Studies like Marriage and Family in India, Religion and Society among Courts of South India by M. N. Srinivas, Kinship Organization in India by Eravati Karve are some of the examples of studies carried out from structural functional perspectives. Many of the scholars like K. C. Kapadia, Vimal Shah, T. N. Madan too have studied the institution from this perspective. Anthropologists like Robert Lowy, George Murdoch and Edward Westermark emphasize the role of social sanction in the union and the way the sanction is accomplished by different rituals and ceremonies. Sociologists like Blood, Lance, Snyder, Bowman, Barber, Burgess and others view it as a system of roles as involving primary relationships. However, these studies did not look into power relations within the family and patriarchy. They focused on the functions of marriage for society at large. Some studies on marriage try to understand the source of conflict in any marriage. Conflict is an integral part of any marriage. The conflict of Marxist perspective studies the difference in people and the disputes that are caused by it. Conflict theorists also study marriage from the macro perspective. In most of the marriages throughout the world, husbands have more power than the wives and the wives have resented it. This creates conflict because men are trying to maintain power and women are attempting to gain more power. This results in conflicts in marriage. Marxists analyze the influence of class on family life, especially socialization. According to Palriwala and Kaur, understanding contemporary marriage, it is necessary to understand a political and cultural economy of marriages. Studies by Amali Phillips, Preeti Ram Murthy, and Dharma Lingam are some examples. Murray's Strauss study on husband to wife power score, women's good studies on relationship between family structure and industrialization are some studies from the Marxist perspective. Studies from the feminist perspectives show how marriage remains the main site of women's oppression. It remains a site where there is a production and reproduction of gender hierarchies. It leaves women exploited and powerless. Many feminist thinkers argue that women do not benefit from marriage and it is inherently negative for women. Studies by feminist scholars like Das, Dubé, Jeffrey and Jeffrey Palriwala use the feminist perspective to analyze the institution of marriage. E. V. Ramaswamy, Peria's ideas of self-respect marriage is interpreted by many as a non-Brahmanical perspective. According to Periyar himself, respect in a marriage is neither traditional nor sacramental. Self-respect marriage not only recognizes the equality of men and women, it also helps the removal of caste system. He put forth one of the most sophisticated theories of gender. According to him, marriage regulates and disciplines women's familial and reproductive labor even as it actively denies their desires and rights to a self-respecting life of their choice, argues Gita. Sociological Studies on Marriage in India Various scholars have studied marriage as a social institution in India through different theoretical frameworks. Various studies are carried out in India regarding marriages on themes like mate selection, attitudinal studies, age at marriage, perceptions to divorce, intercaste, interreligious marriages. Kannan Kapadia, K.T. Merchant have studied aspects relating to age at marriage studies. Kumari, Pratima, Rao and Rao, Ramanamma studied attitude towards various aspects of marriage while J.N. Chaudhary, Y.B. Damle and others have studied divorce related aspects of marriage. Few studies were carried out on themes of intercaste interreligious marriage by Shah, Usha, Bambawale, Ansari and Anjum. According to Patricia Robray, the shifts from structural functional that is works of Srinivas and Karve to structural works of Dumo and Madan and subsequently to cultural Indian Nicholas Das frameworks led to new analytical insights. Recently, there has been growing studies on various aspects of marriage in the context of globalization. Post-globalized India has led to various changes in every aspect of the institution of marriage and new trends are visible. Transnational migrations and marriage, honor killing, shifts in conceptualization of marriage, change in mate selection process, kinship support in changing context and role of technology are some of the emerging themes in sociology of marriage. Forms of marriage in contemporary India Monogamy remains the dominant form of marriage in contemporary India. Under monogamy, one man marries one woman at a time. According to Malinowski, monogamy is and has been and will remain the only true type of marriage. Monogamy remains the most dominant form in many society because according to Marxists, when males realize their role in reproduction and with gradual control over property, they sought means to ensure that property stayed with them and passed on to the children. Monogamy became their instrument to ensure this. It was then that free sexual relations were replaced with monogamy. Families became monogamous, male dominated and patriarchal as society became capitalist. The monogamy dominates there are other forms of marriage like polyandry. One woman is a wife to more than one man at the same time and polygyny where one man is husband to more than one woman at the same time. In India as in all other societies, there are elaborate rules laid down for mate selection. 
endogamy partner to be selected outside certain groups remains one of the major guiding rules for mate selections event today endogamy and exogamy are not opposite to each other but they supplement each other caste endogamy is largely followed in contemporary india however there have been cases reported of intercaste marriages that is marriage of people belonging to different caste as a references to hypergamy or anuloma marriage of a daughter in the superior caste or higher varna a hap- and hypogamy or pratiloma marriage between male of a lower varna or caste and a female of higher varna type of marriages the 1954 special marriage act legalizes intercaste marriages in india largely perceived as a modern phenomena there are very few intercaste marriages taking place rather in the post globalized era many such marriages are target of community and incidents of violence and all killings are rampant Why do intercaste marriages face such reactions? Caste remains a system on which the whole edifice of Hindu religion depends. If the caste system does not remain intact, the existence of Hindu religion itself is threatened. Therefore, it is important that only endogamous marriages are practiced. Dr. Ambedkar has rightly pointed out that women are the gateways to the caste system. Existence and purity of any caste depends on the women in that community, that is, upon the reproductive powers of women. Thus there is an increasing dissent and violence against intercaste marriages taking place in India. Prem Chaudhary in her work on North India addresses the issue of contentious couple who refuse to get married according to family wishes and widespread violence against them. In her work she highlights how the state works in unison with caste, gender and patriarchy. She says kinship linkages provided by marriage, legitimacy and relations established through marriage give a caste group its strength, recognition and leverage in wider society and polity. and in fact to the very process of production and political economy therefore if there are any instances of marriage that upsets these arrangements they are dealt with extreme violence another endogamous norm in mate selection is that of religion though there have been some incidents of interreligious marriages in india they are minuscule in number through the special marriage act 1954 allows a man and a woman belonging to different religion to marry and to retain their own religion even after marriage yet we find most of the women in such marriages convert to the religion of her husband in spite of having legal sanctions to such marriage in practice such married couples are socially ostracized left with no family support and at times killed by family or society members at large The communalist and fundamentalist perceive interreligious marriages as a threat for the survival. To combat this, they follow a multi-throng policy to enforce endogamous marriages. They follow various tactics right from ideologically insisting on endogamous marriages to violently coercing them. A pamphlet distributed by Babu Bajrangi's Nav Chetan Trust, a communal organization in Gujarat which calls itself a social work organization stated, If you rescue one girl it is same as saving 100 cows one daughter equals 100 holy cows in the era of globalization when a sense of rootlessness and alienation is becoming severe violence over issues of religion and identities are becoming more acute thus we also see this modern phenomena of globalization has pre modern implications for women as their sexuality is being redefined especially through the institution of marriage Another form of relationships that are increasingly becoming popular especially in metropolitan cities in India is live in relationship. These relations means living together and establishing a sexual relation without marriage. It has legal acceptance though not social acceptance on a wider scale. Though live in relations are not new in our society now a large number of people are openly talking about them. There are practices like maitri kararas and gandharva viva in ancient time can also be viewed as similar to this. Live in relationships in the present form have largely been a post globalization phenomena. Globalization has stressed all relationship the earlier dominant values in marriages like loyalty duty docility etc have been replaced with companionship equality compatibility most of the information technology professionals prefer to have a live in relationship before getting married long working hours night shifts stressful workplaces and no social life are some of the reasons for this trend the protection of women from domestic violence act 2005 has recognized relationship in the nature of marriage and protects female partners from domestic domestic violence such partners can claim monetary and other reliefs under the act the supreme court further has recently given a judgment where if a man and woman lived like husband and wife for a long period of time and had children the judiciary would presume that two were married the children born out of such relationship are legitimate there is an increasing trend of youngsters in urban areas who opt for live in relationship and this is largely perceived as an alternative to marriages same sex marriages are not legal in india yet we see many Homosexual men and women now live in stable relationships such relationships are based on mutual trust and friendship 
there are more and more people coming out in the open and talking about the relationship. Another form of marriage and families we see in urban India are the reconstituted families. The term reconstituted family refers to a family in which at least one of the adults has children from a previous marriage or relationship. They are also referred to as step families, argues Giddens. With the increase in the rate of divorce and less stigma attached to such marriages and an increasing number of people remarrying, such type of families is growing in India. Changing nature of family in contemporary India. The social institution of marriage serves as a barometer to understand the stage of development of society. The Indian marriage scenario today once again demonstrates that Indian society has changed only superficially, but deep down it is largely the same close conservative caste-based society. However, we discern certain trends in the changing nature of marriage in contemporary India at large. First, there are discernible changes in the aim of marriage. In the Hindu religion, marriage was considered as a sacrament to beget progeny, especially a son. There are many references in Hindu religious books that extol the importance of a son which will pave way of parents to heaven. In Christian and Muslim religion, marriage too had a religious basis, the main objective of which was social sanction to sexual relations and to beget children. However, in the contemporary context, many couples don't marry for progeny but for companionship. Rather, there is a slight increase in the double income, no kids couple, dings, couples who remain childless voluntarily. In the context of globalization, the significance of the religious aspect of marriage is considered secondary or rather insignificant with growing exposure to various ideas. Secondly, significant change is seen in the process of mate selection. Even in today's Indian society, parents choosing mates for their children are a norm. Almost 90% of marriages in India remain arranged. Though there are increasing cases where youngsters choose their own partners, they remain negligible in numbers. These days, there is an increasing trend to choose spouses by consulting parents, thus giving it an element of modernity. Parents select mates for their children on the basis of family status, culture, caste, dowry, while children give importance to education, character and physical appearance. Recently, there is also an increasing rise in the trend of matchmaking through internet websites. In a study surfing for spouses, Houses, marriage websites in the new Indian marriage, Ravinder Kaur observes that there is an increasing use of the internet for matchmaking as it expands the horizon over which brides and grooms can be served for. She also states that through the internet is an aspect of modernity as it expands choice and possibility and overcomes barriers of geography and physical location. This modernity does not encompass seeking marriage partners across traditional criteria of caste, class, religion and region. Thirdly, Indian Parliament has raised the age of marriage to a minimum of 18 years for girls and 21 years for boys. Yet, according to the recent UNICEF data, 47% of girls in India get married before 18 years of age. The various sociological studies conducted in the last few decades have also revealed that the trend in the age of marriage from 1930 onward has shown a continuous rise. Realization of dysfunctional aspects of child marriage, spread of education, especially among females, freedom of mate selection, desire to control the size of family and change in the object of marriage from dharma to companionship are some of the causes responsible for this trend. Among the urban areas with the increasing number of women getting higher education and being economically independent, there is an increasing trend to have late marriages. Presently, there is a debate on increasing marriageable age of girls to 21 years. Fourthly, the stability of marriage cannot be taken for granted. Statistics demonstrate there is a rise of number of divorces throughout India. According to 2012 statistics, 43,000 divorces were taken across the country and out of which 20,000 cases were from Maharashtra. In a study carried out in Bangalore in 2003, the number of cases from the IT sector was 283 while in 2004 it went to 526. Statistics available show that in 2005 it went to 946 and in 2006 the figure was 1246. This can also be cited as one of the reasons for increasing number of people opting for live-in relationships rather than entering into marriage. Challenges to the institution of marriage The changing nature of the institution of marriage has posed several challenges to its existence. The liberalization policy thou considered as economic phenomenon have various socio-cultural implications in the lives of individuals. With the liberalization policy and government of India withdrawing from its responsibility, we see, we see a shrinking of formal workplace. This has led to a large number of men and women becoming part of the informal sector. Informal labor is labor which usually works on contracts with long working hours. They do not get other labor benefits and are extremely underpaid. Thus, having no social security other than a contract job, this puts severe stress on family and marriage at large. Women are now increasingly participating in the job market and also form a large part of the informal labor. 
However, the women work outside the roles and responsibilities within the home do not undergo any change. As a result, they work in double shifts, that is, both inside and outside the home. This adds to the stress in marriage as men do not contribute to the household work. As women are becoming increasingly economically self-independent, they do not suffer unjust treatment meted out to them from their in-laws. Disintegration of joint family to nuclear family forces the couple to rely on specialized agencies in the in day-to-day -day work or on friends and extended family. Presently, there are specialized agencies like daycare centers for children and old, activity classes, counselors, which aids couples for smooth functioning of day-to-day -day affairs. It should be noted that there are increasing number of baby crushes that are providing 24-hour services which is in response to working women who work in shifts at call centers or MNCs. Marital counselors are increasingly in demand in urban areas. Earlier parents and relatives played a crucial role in the case of marital crises, but in the last three decades the nature of marriage has undergone so many changes that they are unable to grasp the complexity of contemporary marriage. As a result, a specialized professional counselor is needed. Summary. The upper sections deal with the sociological concept of social institution and marriage as a social institution in India. It seeks to analyze and understand the contemporary social situation of marriage, the diversity of marriage in contemporary India and its changing nature. Lastly, it discusses the challenges faced by marriage as a social institution in contemporary India. After discussing marriage in India, especially the challenges faced by the institution of marriages in contemporary India, one sees that increasingly the Primordial identities such as caste are playing an increasing role in mate selection, especially the ideas related to honor killing where men and women both are subjected to great deal of violence if they marry outside the caste is a matter of great concern. And this has also been reflected in popular cinema such as the recent movie in Marathi called Sairad. What is interesting to note is we have to deal with these issues and we have to debate and Prem Chodhi's work in terms of eloping couples is also a very interesting take on understanding how honor killings operates within the intersections of patriarchy, class, caste within India. Thank you.